I'm going to demonstrate how to install the new incubator control module that was developed by incubatorwarehouse.com. I'm going to use this cardboard box as my cabinet incubator and though I do not recommend using a cardboard box for an incubator it will serve to show how easy it is to install this device. The first step will be to determine where in your incubator you want it to be installed. We're going to choose just this surface right here and the back side has a four inch square casing and that is what's going to embed into the incubator and so first I'm going to draw a four inch square very easy to do if this were truly cardboard that I was going, going to use for my incubator I would just use a, a blade to cut that but we're assuming this is wood and so I'll show you how to cut a nice square in wood take a drill bit that's large enough to fit the blade of your jigsaw drill holes in each corner obviously it's easier to do in cardboard then with your jigsaw cut nice straight lines you've got a nice square that is ready to fit your thermostat so put all the wirings in, inside push that into place and it fits nice and flush on the surface of your incubator then with a pencil or a pen mark these holes and you now know where to drill for your mounting holes take a drill bit that is sized appropriately for the screw you're going to use into your wood drill some pilot holes And just like that, you have mounted the control module. Piece of cake. The next step will be the wiring. Let's take a look on the inside, see what we've got. So this is what it will look like from the inside. The wires you've got here are, first of all, the small wire is the probe, which is going to sense the temperature and allow the thermostat to adjust accordingly. You've got the power cord, it's one of the plug on it, black wire. Then you've got three other wires. You've got white, brown, and green. Each of them color-coded and the instructions will tell you whether they go to the fan, the motors, the egg turner motors, or the heater. First the power cord. You've got to get this out of the incubator so you can plug it into the wall. There's a few simple ways to do this. If you want to drill a hole that is large enough for the plug which would be something a little over 1.2 inches. You could simply do that and then push the plug through. Piece of cake. Another method would be to have the wire go out the door, something like that. A little less convenient, but uh, you could very easily cut a little notch in your door or a window or something like that that would allow the cord to, to go through. Very simple to do, but may not be ideal for, based on your application. The other way is to use the universal bushing that comes with the kit. It's this small bushing that comes with the thermostat kit. It allows you to tap a hole that is a smaller size in the side of your incubator or wherever you want the plug to come out. Press this plug into it and then feed the cord through it. Now to do that you would need to cut the power cord and use the yellow connectors that come with the kit for that purpose if you would like to do it that way and I'll show you how that's done. To splice in the wire connectors it's very very simple. Take any pair of cutters whether it be part of pliers or anything as technical as some specialized wire cutters and any any kind of wire cutters will do. 
you'll want to strip away a little bit of the plastic insulation coating like that on both sides. Then it's a very simple matter of using the yellow connectors that come with the kit just for this purpose. Give them a little tug, not much, just a little to make sure they're on there firm. Do the same thing on the other side. This can be done with pliers if that's all you have. Just make sure you get a good crimp. Once those are done, these two then go back together very simply and you have created a splice in your wire, which means you can feed one end through the universal bushing, then put the wires back together and you have a nice tight uh, connection through the wall of your incubator. To mount the bushing, you're going to drill a hole wherever you'd like in your incubator. We're going to put it right here for our purposes. Obviously a lot easier to drill a hole through cardboard, but again, it demonstrates the, the application. You push the connectors through the bushing like this. Bit of a tight fit, that's good, because it means you don't have to have such a huge bushing. Put these through the hole. Push the bushing into place like that. And from the other side, We can take these connectors, connect them back to the power cord, and from inside, you connect it back into place, and then pull this back through as far as you'd like it, and you are set with power. Plug this in from the outside, and you can power it up. Let's do it. Let's plug this in. It comes on. Let's get a little bit closer so we get a better view of what's happening inside there. There we can see the temperature, 71.2. That's the current temperature inside the incubator. There's no heater in there. It shows there's 100% power going to the heater, although there's no heater attached right now. But it's still sending 100% of the power through those wires. So when you hook the heater up, it will get 100% of the available power. This is a proportional thermostat which means that as the temperature gets closer to the set point, the percent power going to the heater will decrease. What's cool about that is that you can have a heater that has a lot of thermal mass, meaning a lot of mass that would hold heat. You can have a high thermal mass heater. As the heat tapers down, as it gets close to the set point, you can use a high thermal mass heater and still not have really big temperature fluctuations inside your incubator. This control module also gives you the ability to control your fan as well as control your egg turner motors. You can use a you can use the extremely slow RPM motor that is standard on the market right now that does one complete rotation every four hours and just set the power so it's always on to those motors or you can use motors that don't move as slow so you'd want them to, to move just occasionally and not all the time. You can set the amount of time that the motor will turn on and the, the time interval at which you want them to turn on. In other words, turn on once every hour for five seconds or whichever combination works for the motor you want to use. It gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of what kind of motor you use and what kind of turner design you want to create. When it comes time to wire up the heater or the fan or the egg turners, follow the color coding in the instructions and each of these wire ends have wire nuts attached to them. Simply undo the wire nuts, 
I have unplugged this. There's no power co coming here right now. But be aware that if this is plugged in, these will be live wires. So be very cautious. Always do your wiring with the power plug unplugged. Simply attach those to the wires for the accessory you're going to hook it up to, and you're good to go. It's that easy. Place the thermal sensor at a location that will be as representative of po as possible of the egg temperature that you want to achieve. In other words, place this near the eggs. If you've got multiple layers, choose a central location. Place it about the level of the egg itself, near the center of the incubator. Of the three options you have to power or to control, the fan, the heater, and the turner, you don't have to use all three. They don't all have to be used in order to use the ones that you would like to use.